Good, happy Friday evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, thousands of fans head to New Hampshire Motor Speedway for a final fall race weekend. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. This is a replica of what NASCAR drivers are racing for, the championship trophy. Oh, yeah, you got a flat. But race weekend is also a chance to promote a good cause. Driver Joey Logano is helping AAA promote New Hampshire's move over law. You don't know if the, the person that's driving the wrecker is up underneath the car and he's got his feet hanging out, he's got his back to traffic, he can't see it coming. Chris McKenna knows how dangerous things can get on the road as he was helping a motorist. And a tractor trailer came way too fast, came up behind me and hit the back of the wrecker and uh, told the wrecker. Next year, this race is moving to Las Vegas. The gift shop manager says they're stocked with memorabilia to commemorate the event. It's our um, final September race, um, so we're making sure that our fans get everything that they want and um, they have that souvenir saying I was there. It's also the final race at the Magic Mile for Dale Earnhardt Jr. His fans understand him retiring, but will miss him. I just like the way he talked, plain and simple. You know, he wasn't, didn't have ears about him, just was regular guy. Most of all, though, the fans will miss this race. Sad, just sad. Seems like there's more people in September because of the weather. Makes it more fun. Well, Christmas in July is wonderful. Halloween is always a blast. You never know it's going to be from the scary to the mild to the in-between. If you're heading to the track, especially on Sunday, be aware there are some new traffic patterns on I-93 and Route 106, the roads leading into the track. Reporting live in Loudoun, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Mom of boy killed by father feared he would kill child court docs show let's take a listen to this video from wcvb boston there's to win but when u.s army soldiers take the field it's been Police knew about William Scotia, had dealt with him several times before, but say they had no idea that this could happen. Never seen a kid dead, let alone by a neighbor. A sad, shocking, and devastating discovery. The body of a six-year-old boy, Anthony Scotia, was found in his East Street Foxboro home. Next-door neighbor Richard Shane went inside the house overnight, summoned by the boy's hysterical grandmother. And she said essentially she put the kid to bed, she watches him, the father isn't supposed to be there. She fell asleep and when she woke up the father was in the house reassuring her that the son, that his son was okay and not to go upstairs, which was to go back to sleep. Clearly, we now know he wasn't okay. Foxboro police say 49-year-old William Scotia shot and killed his only son, then later turned the gun on himself inside the home sometime after attempting to start a fire. Chief William Baker says Scotia was well known to police. And the history led me to uh, deny him a pistol permit uh, in July of this year. He appealed that denial to the district court in Rentham, and on September 8th, the judge in the Rentham District Court supported my denial. Despite that denial, Scotia was able to get a handgun. Police say there had been eight previous calls to the home, and Scotia was arrested last Saturday. The father was always very friendly, you know. I never would have thought in a million years that anything could happen like that. It's terrible. Authorities confirmed Scotia used to live in the home, but there was a restraining order, so he was no longer with the mother, from what we understand. That mother, by the way, was at work at the time. We're live in Foxboro. Josh Brogadier, WCVB News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that report. Maine National Guard members deployed to Virgin Islands. 
Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. seven members of the Maine Air National Guard got the call to help in the hurricane relief efforts and they're heading to St. Croix. These are pictures from the Bangor International Airport last night. Two C-130 cargo planes loaded up and these planes are big enough to hold a full-size pickup truck, a trailer, pallets of water and other supplies. Seven members of the 265th Combat Communications Squadron have trained for this exact kind of mission. They could be gone up to a month helping to rebuild phone lines and internet service. Right now the mission is to provide assistance at the airfield so we can help to get aircraft in and get relief and response efforts into that site because as you know the, the communications and, and much of the infrastructure within the U.S. Virgin Islands has been almost virtually destroyed. This isn't the first time the local National Guard here has been called up to help elsewhere. Back in 2011 during Hurricane Irene, Vermont got hit and then back in 2005 of course Hurricane Katrina they sent some people too. In South Portland, Jim Keithley, WMCW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. And now let's take a look at your stock market and see how your stock market closed for this Friday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red and went down. Your S&P 500 index closed in the green and went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. RUFS 2K closed in the green and went up. And VAX closed in the red and went down. Dow posts another week of gains despite Apple's worst week in more than a year. Healthcare stocks climbed more than half percent from session lows to attempt slight gains in the afternoon trade after Senator John McCain withdraw support of the GOP health care bill. Apple shares continue to drag on markets, having dropped 5.5% since Monday. Shares of the iPhone maker had their worst week since April 2016. U.S. stocks closed nearly mixed Friday, helped by a recovery of health care stocks, the Dow closed out its second consecutive week of gains, up 0.4% on the week. McCain says he opposes Graham Cassidy bill as other Republicans weigh options. Senator John McCain of Arizona announced in a statement on Friday that he cannot support the Graham-Cassidy health care bill. McCain's oppositions will likely sink the latest Republican effort to repel and replace the Affordable Care Act. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow morning with more great news. Good night, everyone.